There is a lot of enthusiasm around NFTs, non-fungible tokens, lately, especially among those who have been following uh, Bitcoin and blockchain applications, but they didn't know how to relate to them. Um, maybe they weren't attracted by the financial aspect or the decentralization uh, that uh, uh, it could represent and the social societal implications. But should you care about NFTs and uh, why all the interest? Should you now turn everything you have into an NFT? What does that even mean? The ability to better handle digital objects uh, then alternative systems has been a promise of blockchain technologies for long. Bitcoin is digital money and the promise of Bitcoin is to be a better money than other alternatives, whether banknotes uh, as a medium of exchange, whether gold as a store of value. And the promise of NFTs is to handle better digital objects than the alternative in some specific applications, some of which we can already understand and may or may not be relevant to you and interesting and others that certainly we still have to um, discover, uh, let alone implement and adopt widely. One of the aspects of money that NFTs completely uh, handle the opposite way is what is called fungibility. If I give you a banknote, you are not going to look at the serial number and let's say that you have a preference for even numbers uh, and if I give you a banknote with an odd number, you will say, oh, uh, this is uh, not $10. I will only accept this as $9, even if it says 10, because the serial number is odd and I don't like odd numbers. Or uh, it doesn't happen that uh, you pay something uh, with a banknote and uh, a gas chromatographic exam will highlight that there are cocaine traces on that banknote and the person will not accept it because they will say that the banknote has been involved in illegal drug trafficking as evidenced by that result. This is, by the way, true. Most of the dollar and euro banknotes have traces of cocaine on them that can be revealed. And if we didn't believe that money was fungible and that uh, we shouldn't get into too much detail on what is their serial number or what traces of chemicals they carry, it would be a big issue because we couldn't handle money. So, Money not only is fungible, but it must be fungible. This is not an absolute, because, for example, if I hand you a banknote, and this banknote, while genuine, uh, it is tainted by the particular um, chemicals, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the paints, the, uh, the, the, the coloring, that uh, uh, the explosion of a charge uh, procures when there is a bank robbery and uh, uh, this device uh, is in the bag and as I escape, uh, it uh, ruins all the banknotes. Well, if you are smart, you are actually not going to uh, accept that banknote because it is tainted. It is uh, coming from a robbery straight away. It can be directly connected to a robbery. 
So the fungibility of uh, money is not absolute, but it is to a very large degree fungible. Now, what are some of the uh, reasons why certain things may not be fungible? Uh, let's take an apartment of any given size. That particular measure of uh, whatever the area of the apartment is, the size of the apartment is, is not enough to be able to compare it with another apartment of the same size. The two are not uh, interchangeable. If you say, oh, uh, why didn't you stay here? And I give you some money for that apartment, but then something comes up and you give me another apartment instead, I will most likely not be happy. At least I will want to learn a hundred different things about the new one that you are proposing as part of the transaction. And this is true for most things that are similar but not interchangeable. Well, most things physical. Because on the other hand, if I have uh, my um, typical picture that I use as my portrait online as I sign up on various services, the picture that I upload is going to be a JPEG file, an image file, and I upload it once, twice, thrice, four times, and that picture is going to be the same everywhere. The way it is rendered on the particular platform may be different, but it is always going to be the same picture. Now, the solution of NFTs is the ability to transfer the uniqueness of physical objects that are not exchangeable to digital objects that become not exchangeable as a consequence of wrapping them in a digital signature that is managed on the blockchain and makes the digital object unique. Now, we know, and hopefully you know, of all the various features of blockchains, of transparency, um, uh, of uh, traceability, of uh, uh, free, uh, uh, unfettered uh, participation, um, and, and so on. So, as you combine this wrapper around uh, a digital object that makes it unique with the rest uh, of the features that uh, blockchains have, uh, you achieve something that can be applied in, in various areas and they can be useful. Um, what is almost universally the application uh, today, as you look at NFTs, is to be able to show the provenance of a unique digital uh, object. A digital object that is not unique by itself. It has been made unique. So it must be important that we don't confuse the uh, other characteristics uh, of uh, digital objects with this unique wrapper and the ability to prove the chain of ownership and the provenance of that object. For example, the fact that uh, digital expressions of human creativity possess a feature called copyright and that this copyright uh, belongs to the author initially, but it can be transferred, is parallel and independent from it being an EFT. If I take my picture and I wrap it in this digital signature, turn it into an EFT and then sell you that EFT that may or may not 
mean that I am also selling you the copyright, the ability to exclusively benefit from the uh, various potential uses of that image. That is a completely independent decision and transaction. Now, as I make a digital object unique, it is important to understand that the chain of ownership and uh, the provenance of uh, that digital object as it is created, wrapped, sold once, twice, three times, five times, 50 times, and so on, is only the digital reality. If I have to identify a physical object and then give it a digital representation, sign it to turn it into an NFT, the interface between the physical world and the digital world will have to be carefully managed independently of the features of NFTs. The benefit of NFTs accrues only after the information has been acquired. So, if a painting is a physical painting and I wrap it its digital representation in an NFT that is sold once or 50 times. If the painting was a fake and someone appreciates the association of a given NFT as a signature of the painting, well, that doesn't make the painting genuine. Another application outside of the art world uh, of NFTs could be, for example, in real estate, where each piece of real estate can be associated with an NFT. But once again, all the parameters that describe a house or an apartment will have to be truthful for the value of the wrapper and the chain of provenance and ownership uh, to be valuable too. Garbage in, garbage out. In uh, traditional blockchain parlance, this is called the oracle problem. The, the fact that we have to bring in information from the physical world to the digital world. And, and that interface is something that we can, as of right now, only have control over in terms of trusting the interface, bringing in uh, the right kind of information. So, I experimented uh, with NFTs by actually selling a tweet of mine that is from 10 years ago, April 20, 2011. I tweeted, Bitcoin P2P digital currency. I wish you good luck and good fortune against the ire of nation states everywhere. And so did I sell the copyright to that sentence? No. What I sold is a chain of connection to the person who now owns the NFT, who knows that this transaction is genuine. I wrapped uh, uh, the tweet as if I autographed it. And that person will be able in a year or 10 years, whenever, to sell that again, knowing that it indeed has belonged uh, to me and I gave it or sold it to him and so on. And the experiment is very easy. If you have a Twitter account, you can do it too. Just go to the website I used, uh, which is sent.co, uh, if I'm not mistaken. There is a section called valuables. You connect your Twitter account in order to prove that indeed the tweets that you are 
wrapping and selling as an NFT are yours. And then it is just a question of finding someone who wants to buy them. Now, if I were you, I would definitely find someone to buy them. Uh, meaning that you just ask a friend, do you mind buying this for $10 or $5? Because you want to get your hands dirty and complete the experiment. So I encourage you to go and try it and then to keep thinking what are the possible applications of NFTs that go beyond the two that I gave. For me, NFTs are here to stay. They have features that are worthy of exploring further, enriching, enhancing. Just one example. It used to be the case that creators would not benefit from secondary markets. If a painter sold a painting and that painting became very valuable 10 years uh, uh, from the first sale, the 100% of that additional value would go to the people who held on to the painting and sold it uh, to the la latest uh, buyer. But with NFTs, you can set up actually what is the percentage of royalty that you will receive from uh, the secondary, tertiary, whatever number of sales uh, down the line. And that is interesting, for example. And I'm sure there will be many other ways that NFTs will be able to prove themselves to be superior to how we have been tracing uh, the nature, the ownership and uh, the provenance, the chain of custody of objects in the past. More and more of our economy is becoming digital and NFTs are an extremely interesting new component that uh, deserve the attention and the enthusiasm that uh, they um, have now and importantly deserve the experiments that you can conduct easily with them.